The message you're about to listen to is by Rev. Dr. Femi Olaleye of Oikea Christian Centre. Remain blessed as you listen. First Corinthians 14. <clears throat> and look at what he says here. He says, how is it then, brethren? <laughs> when ye come together. Everybody, read the next verse. What is it? Ah, uh, oh, you did open your Bible. Open your Bible, Joe. Sorry, the screen will be back next week. But ah, uh, you did the screen to open Bible. Come on now. Can you read it? one to go? It says what? How is it, brethren? Uh huh. When you come together, every one of you what? Uh huh. Hath a what? Hath a what? Tongue. Hath a what? Revelation. Hath a what? Interpretation. He said, "Let all things be done unto what." Now, during charismatology, many people that were not didn't interpret tongues interpreted for the first time. Okay, so it was a practical session, and I'm, I'm going to, to an extent, do that same thing today. All right, people flowed in tongues and interpretation easily. All right, um, I mean it was beautiful to see. I like seeing that and activating people to flow in those things. Actually, you're right. You're, it's what you have in Christ. It's not hard. It is not for the best behaved. It's for those who have believed the gospel. Praise God. Okay. Now, and um, this coming Friday, we're having a program, Night of Possibilities. It's a video, all right? It's in our Suri Lere Church from 10 o'clock to 6. So what we're going to be doing is an activation night. That's what we're doing there. We're praying in tongues because we're going to have time. So we're going to activate people, all right? I'm going to take time to train you in tongues, interpretation, visions, um, because I think on Wednesday we had some people see visions also, all right. But this one we are going to have time activate you properly, so you can flow in revelation gifts, flow in utterance gifts, and flow in power gifts. All right. We did some demonstration as we got power, but there was no much time. But on Friday I'm going to have time, so I would. It's not. It's it's a it's a school of ministry. Praise the Lord. It's a school of ministry, so you will be trained and taught that properly. Praise the Lord. Now he says here. Everybody, we want to go. It says what? Next verse. It says, If any man speak in an unknown tongue, let it be by what? Two or at the most three, and that by cause, and let one interpret. Now, let me start with tongues. Then we will move into interpretation. Then we will move into, all right, when you are come together, every one of you has something. The way a believer's meeting is to be, a gathering of believers, is not supposed to be always about one pitch person demonstrating the gifts of the Spirit. No. It's not supposed to be about one person always teaching. No. There are meetings where everybody comes together and they come with something. Hallelujah. One person comes with tongues. Another person comes with interpretation. Another person comes with word of knowledge. Another person comes with word of wisdom. Another person comes with a word of prophecy. That is how it should be. Why? Because if you have believed in Jesus, the Spirit of God is on your inside. And the gifts of the Spirit are the gifts of the demonstration of the Spirit of God on your inside. So when you give us a tongue, you are blessing us with a gift. When you give us a prophecy, you are blessing us with a what? With a gift. Okay? If you are giving us a word of knowledge, you are blessing us with a gift. What gift are you blessing us? You are blessing us with a gift of the Spirit. On, on Wednesday, I said that the gift of God to the world is Jesus Christ. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not what? Perish, but have what? Everlasting life. So God gave the world Jesus. But the gift of God or gift of Christ to the church is the Holy Spirit. God or Christ did not give the Holy Spirit to the world. He gave the Holy Spirit to the church. Acts 2.38. Repent and be baptized. Every one of you. All right. And ye shall receive the what? The promise of the Spirit. The promise of the Spirit. Glory to God. Glory to God. That's what he says. Acts 2. He says, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And there came a sound from heaven. As of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the place where they were seated. And they appeared upon them, cloven tongues like, a, like as of fire. And he sat on each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues. Those that got filled were those who believed. So the gift of Christ to the church is the Holy Spirit. 
So the gift is the Holy Spirit. The gift is not tongues. The gift is not word of knowledge. All right? The package is not um, um, power gifts or revelation gifts or utterance gifts. The package is the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Tongues is in the Holy Ghost. Praise God. Miracles in the Holy Ghost. Healings in the Holy Ghost. Word of wisdom in the Holy Ghost. Word of knowledge in the Holy Ghost. So when I give you a word of knowledge, I'm giving you a gift of the Spirit. Glory to God. All right, because that demonstration is the gift, my gift to you. But the gift of Christ to me was the entire package. Are you following? Are you following what I'm saying? The entire package. Please get that message I preached on Wednesday. Charismatology. Amen. You will you will be blessed by it. Now, let's start with tongues and explain something. Because the reason why I always want to tackle tongues is because tongues is your easiest way in. Is your easiest way in. I flow. Very proficiently in the interpretation of tongues. So you can not speak in tongues and I won't understand what you're saying. Praise God. Because of that gift. You understand what I'm saying? I mean, we had a case on <laughs> we had a case on, on Wednesday. So I brought two people out. So one person was to speak in tongues to the other person. How many of you remember that? All right. So one person was speaking in tongues to another person. All right. And so and this other person was to interpret what this person said in tongues. Because you know it was training. You understand? So, part of what person A was saying when he spoke in tongues was that he was saying that the other person's mother was sick. And that the Lord has said that the, person, the, the person's mother will not die. You understand? But you'll be restored to health. But he spoke in tongues. And this person interpreting, you understand, did not pick <laughs> what this person said about his mother. But I was listening to the person talking and I understand. So I was like, wow, what's, is anything wrong with your mother? Say, yes, my mother is in Shubu and she's sick. You understand? All right, because this person, the interpretation was recovery. I, I don't know if you remember that. He said recovery. So this was recovery that he picked. He didn't pick the part that. So you see, tongue is a very powerful thing. When you are speaking in tongue, you're not speaking rubbish. Glory to God. Now let's look at tongues and explain it. I will just give you a very short, brief explanation on tongues. Okay? Very brief and short explanation of tongues. There are. Four adjectives used for tongues in scripture. Mark 16, 17. Turn in them. The first is new. New tongues. Deeper, deeper, deeper in you. Deeper, deeper, deeper in you. Mark 16, 17. Can we read one to go? It says what? And these signs shall follow them that what? Believe. In my name shall they what? Cast out devils. They shall speak with what? They shall speak with what? Talk to me. They shall speak with what? New tongues. New tongues. Now, that word new is the Greek word kaino. K-A-I-N-O-S. What does that mean? It means unprecedented. Something that has not been seen in its form before. That's what kaino is. It is the same word used in 2 Corinthians 5.17 where it says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. A new creature. All right? A new creation. So new creation, that means a creation never existed before. It's a brand new guy. So when he says new tongues, he's talking about tongues. Never, we never heard these tongues before. It's a new tongue. It's a new one. It's unprecedented. So Jesus said, This sign shall follow them that believe in my name. They shall speak in new tongues. Say out loud, I'm born again. I'm born again. Louder, I'm born, I'm born again. I'm born again. I speak in tongues. I speak in new tongues. Stop arguing. Is it for everybody? He says, Them that believe. Jesus said it. It was Jesus. So what's your problem? Jesus said it. They will speak with new tongues. Hallelujah. Say out loud, I speak with new tongues. Say, I speak with new tongues. Say, I speak with new tongues. Now, the second adjective used to describe tongues is in Acts 2. Adjective of prefix. I am in you. Guys, you know, all the songs I've ever written, I cannot count the number of songs I've written. Maybe you guys, maybe James keeps his score. All of them, I wrote them by tongues and interpretation. 
And all of them, I wrote them either on pulpit, no riyasa. All the songs we sang here, the riyas. We're not hearing it for the first time here. Yeah? You're already used to me now, so praise God. The one we um, sang, uh, this one we sang, uh, You are my glory, you are my mirror, I'm changed. We sang it in first service in Sri Lanka this morning. You know, I mean, they turned the place upside down. Awesome, awesome. So you get it, we got, got it from the spirit in tongues, then I interpret it. So that is what the Bible calls, and I'll show you today, singing in the spirit, then singing in the what? Understanding also. That is the meaning of that. You understand? So you can speak in tongues and interpret it. Pray in tongues and pray the interpretation. Sing in tongues and sing interpretation. Your worship life can never remain the same. I'm always tired of the songs people sing. I'm tired of it. Every time we sing song. Yes, too. You understand? There's more songs. In heaven, I don't think we'll repeat song. Praise God. Ah, if not, I'll just say to my Lord Jesus, I have a song. Give it my song. I'll give them. Those of us will sing it. Then Paul come, give his own song. All of us in Moses will come, sing his own song. Then Miriam, that one is occurring. She will give her song. All of us will sing. Praise God. We'll repeat song. Look at Acts 2 and verse 4. And everybody really want to go. It says what? And they were all. Oh. Everybody say all. Oh. Everybody say all. Oh. Oh. Every single time these people were filled in, with the Holy Spirit in Acts, everybody was filled. Nobody was left out. The Spirit, infilling of the Spirit is for how many people? All. Oh. It says, and they were what? All oh, filled with the Holy Ghost. And began to what? Speak with what? Other tongues. That's another active. What other there is talking about different. Something different from what they were used to speaking. So when you are speaking in tongues, you are speaking in other, other tongues. Something you have not learned. Something different from your native dialect. That is the tongues you are speaking. And it is not rubbish you are speaking. I will define tongues for you in a moment. Praise the Lord. I said praise the Lord. Now, the third adjective used for tongues in the Bible is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Are you learning something here? I said, are you learning something here? 1 Corinthians chapter number 14. I've got fire, fire on my altar. No demons here, no sickness here. Fire, fire on my altar. Fire, fire always. <laughs> Praise God. Glory to God. Mm. Amen. Look at him and say, Fire, fire on my altar. <laughs> fire, fire now. Fire, fire. Never, never will I go out. Never, never, now. Never, never. Woo! Glory to God. Yesterday I was, I, I, I did a call of members of our Canada and America church group that was asking them one question. After I greeted them, I said, is there fire on your altar? Are you praying? Are you studying the word? You should have someone check up on you and ask you that question. What do you think? What do you guys think? You have to have fire on your altar. You have to be, I mean, on fire. On fire. Your eyes must always be blazing. Never cold. No ice there. Just flames. Amen? Just flames. Holy Ghost flames. Anybody is free to try you. The outcome, that's up to them. Praise the Lord. Sometimes you need to pray against demon of this. Just be on fire. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Generational causes, ancestral causes, not with the man of fire. Or oh, be that. They don't burn the devil well. Glory to God. Fire. On oh, fire. Burning in prayer. Burning in the word. 
Glory to God. Demonic things will happen. Demonic manipulation. Anybody is free to do anything. Anybody go to Greek school, you go to Babalawa and call your name. It's the after effect that is, you understand. Up to you. <laughs> Glory to God. It's a free word. It's not a free word. It's not a free word. It's a free word. Ah, anybody can be witch. It's your decision. But if you bring it near my side, you understand? Glory to God. You know, I won't pray for you to die. But you see, the angels, my angels, they are very rascally. They don't, they are like the Elijah type. I've been trying to talk to them to calm down, you know, relax. That it's a new time, it's a new covenant. But they, they are still, they are still, their minds are not renewed. Are you following? So, amen? Mm. Praise God. You know, in your Bible, in the Bible, eh, there were some people that went against the gospel. Glory to God. And Luke stylishly told us. <laughs> How many of you know it was not a mistake that Luke told us Herod died after trying to kill Peter? How many of you know this? No, it's not a mistake. Oh, you thought he was just doing things by moonlight? No. And you know he said an angel of God struck him. Well, that's what he said. Amen. I, I won't edit it. He said it. It's not that God struck him, but you see, there are angels and they will be judged after <laughs> whether what they did was you understand but they will do what they want to do amen praise the lord mm -hmm. for you just be on fire look at them and say just be on fire look at someone and say just be on fire on that person say just be on fire glory to god now i said the, the third adjective is what yeah now look at what it says first corinthians 14 and 2 can we read one to go? It says what? For he, everybody read, it says for what? For he that speaketh in an what? Alright, unknown. Now, I must state clearly that some of these prefixes were put in there by the interpreters. But they are fine, they are okay. Alright, because they don't affect or change what, you know, the meaning. It says unknown tongue. Unknown tongue here means that a tongue, that word unknown in the Greek is agnostos. Agnostos means something that... Um, it's without knowledge, without knowledge, because gnosis is knowledge. Gnosis is knowledge. So agnosis means without knowledge. So that means it is a tongue that is spoken that the people hearing you don't understand. Are you following? So that's why if you look at verse 3 of 1 Corinthians 14, everybody look in there. It says what? It says what? For he that speaketh in a known tongue, it says what? That's too sorry. For he that speaketh in a known tongue, speaketh not unto what? Uh -huh. But unto God for what? For what? How be it in the spirit he speaketh what? So, Pastor, if I come to you and say, Kizu, Pavash, Uradi la Klusi, Telik, Waramino Prifte Kala Alto, Chilafila, Palamina, Pisco, Profeta, Palateroto, Sari, Sofracta la Creto, Profisa, Le Soprata, Gritovu, Digedacta. What have I done? I spoke in tongues, right? Right? Now it says, No man understands. Albeit in the spirit, he speaks what? Now, that no man is talking about there is not every man in Christ. The no man there has a context. Because if you read 1 Corinthians 14, the no man there is talking about the unbeliever. Or the baby Christian, the one who is unschooled in spiritual things. Praise God. Why do we say that? Well, because later on it talks about interpreting tongues. If no man understands, then there will be no possibility of interpretation. That means if two of us are skilled, look at them and say skilled. If you are skilled in or trans gifts, I can communicate to you in tongues and you understand what I'm saying. And you communicate back. Amen. There was one meeting like this. Mm -hmm. He had Kenny Higgin, T.L. Osborne, and Ora Roberts in the meeting. Then Kenny Copeland was in that meeting too. You understand? So I was watching some of those Holy Ghost meetings were crazy. Kenny, Kenny Higgin was some, something else. When he came, Kenny Higgin pushed the boundaries. So in that meeting, you were having a, one of these days, we're going to have our own video. We're going to host Night of Possibilities. And during that video, we're going to watch some videos. 
Praise God. Because it's training. So in that, in that meeting, Kenneth Hagin spoke in tongues to Kenneth Copeland. Okay? And when he spoke in tongues to Kenneth Copeland, Kenneth Copeland got up, went to a man, laid hands on the man, and the man went under the power. Are you following? Then Kenneth Hagin now said, that, did you see what happened there? I was like, oh, yeah, you got up there. I said, yeah, because I told him to. I said, when I was speaking in tongues, I told him to get up, go and lay on that brother over there, all right, and do this, 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 and that's what he did. So you get to a level where tongues is no longer mysterious. When you're flowing interpretation. Let us look at interpretation quickly, all right? Praise God. Praise God. If you are feeling sleepy in this service, it's your village people. Praise God. Now, look at this. Amen. Now, look at what it says. In verse 5. Okay, let's have a verse 3. It says, But he that prophesied speaketh in. But he that um, prophesied speaketh what? Okay, something's wrong with my Bible. <laughs> All right, he that prophesied speaketh, not, speaketh unto what? Uh huh. Unto what? Edification and what? Exhortation and what? Comfort. Now, look how it says in verse 4. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifieth what? Himself. So you are building up who? Yourself. But it says, but he that prophesied edifieth what? The church. So that means the person who is prophesying, what is prophecy? Prophecy means to speak, all right, under the inspiration of the Spirit in the language everybody understands. Are you seeing that? So it says that when you do that, you are edifying the people. But it says when you speak in tongues, you are edifying only yourself. Because only you, all right, understands what you say. You are the one getting blessed. Praise God. All right, praise God. Now let's go on. What does he say next? He now says, I would that ye all do what? Church now, talk now. I would that ye all what? But rather that ye what? For greater is he that prophesied than he that speaketh with what? With tongues. Except he what? Interpret. That the church may what? Receive edifying. Now look at verse 6. He says, now, brethren, if I come unto you, speaking with tongues, what shall I profit you? Except I shall speak to you either by what? Revelation. That means, except I interpret and bring a revelation, or what? Knowledge, or by prophecy, or by doctrine. And evil things without life giving sound, whether pipe or harp, except they give a distinction in the sound, how shall it be known what it is piped or harp? For if the trumpet give an uncertain sound, who shall prepare himself for battle? Nine. So likewise, see, except ye utter by the tongue, words easy to be understood. How shall it be known what is spoken? For ye shall speak what into the air. There are it may be so many vo- kind of voices in the world, and none of them is without signification. Therefore, if I know not the meaning of the voice, I shall be unto him that speaketh a barbarian, and he that speaketh shall be a barbarian unto me. Even so, ye, for as much as ye are zealous of spiritual gifts, seek that ye may excel to the what edifying of the church. Now, for, now, look at verse 11, every, t- verse 13, sorry. One to go. It says what? Wherefore, let him that speaketh in an unknown tongue pray that he may what? You see that? For if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit does what? But my understanding is what? Now, look at verse 15. Everybody read one to go. It says what? What is it then? I will pray what? With the spirit. And I will pray with what? I will sing with what? The Spirit. I will sing with what? The understanding also. Now look at 16. It now says, Else when thou shalt bless with what? With the Spirit. How shall he that occupy the room of the word unlearned? Say what? Amen. At thy giving of thanks. Seeing he understandeth not what thou sayest. For thou verily giveth thanks well. So that means he's saying, If you bless the man in the Spirit, you gave thanks well. The only problem is he doesn't understand what you are saying. Praise God. So that's why the person who is speaking in tongues must master what? Interpretation. Now what does interpretation mean? Simple. Interpretation means to give, to give what? The meaning. It doesn't mean to translate. Interpretation of tongues is not translate tongues. It's not saying rabba, I, rompo, a. No, 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 no. That's not what interpretation means. Interpretation means to give the meaning of what he said. Praise God. I said, praise God. What he said, give the meaning of what he said. Now, how do you pick that? You see, because the tongues is by the Spirit. And the interpretation is by the Spirit. It means the answer to and the meaning of every tongue is in the Spirit, in the Holy Ghost. 
So that means if a man is speaking in tongues, to know what he's saying, you need to reach within in the Holy Ghost to know what he's saying. Praise God. I said, praise God. So what you do is this one speaking in tongues, listen to what this person is saying. The Spirit of God will quicken the interpretation to you on your inside. That's how it happens. You will just know from your spirit, this is what this person is saying. Praise God. And even you, when you are praying in tongues, as you are praying in tongues, all right, listen to what you're saying. Listen to, pay attention. The problem with many people when they are praying in tongues is that they are speaking in tongues, but their mind has traveled. How many of you battle with that? How many of you battle with that? You are praying in tongues, but you are in Oshogo. You understand? You are praying in tongues, but you are in your restaurant. You want to eat amalam, pandediam. That, you understand? So your mind is not there. No, your mind needs to be there. Praise God. In a service like this, when the, um, we're having a meeting, maybe a meeting where we say, okay, everybody, all right, whatever the Lord inspires you, come and give it, come and give it, and things like that. When you're in such a meeting, okay, all right, pay attention to what the Spirit of God is saying. Praise God. Now, I must add, that the kind of prophecies and the interpretations you get usually would be influenced by the level of your exposure to the Word of God. You have some folks that because of their exposure to a lot of law, law teaching, sin consciousness, everything, every time they heard God speak, it was to say there was sin in the church. How many of you know what I'm talking about? Every single time the prophecy is, brethren, there is sin! Everything is sin. Fornication, adultery in the midst. It's, that's, what's that? That's not, that's, what's, that's not prophecy. Praise God. That's not prophecy. It's obvious. Somebody will be fornicating in the house now. You understand? <laughs> it's obvious. Somebody, there will be somebody. So that's not prophecy. It doesn't edify. Glory to God. I said glory to God. And when all the teaching in that church is about generational causes, ancestral causes, the prophecy and interpretation will be sounding like that. It doesn't mean that what the Spirit of God is saying. It's just this person's mindset. So that is why to become better at utterance gifts, there needs to be a giving and diligence to the reading of the Word and discipleship in the Word of God. So you now find out that you now begin to give the Word and give Word of wisdom, Word of knowledge in such a way that is so skilled. Glory to God. So skilled. The revelation of Jesus is there. Amen. I said amen. amen. So for example, let's say the Lord tells you somebody, okay, let's say the Lord tells you somebody, all right, is under oppression of the devil. Let's say that. Maybe let's say the Lord shows you that there's someone that when she sleeps, all right, a demonic, um, she has this experience where somebody's sleeping with her in the dream. How do you deliver such an in, a message to someone, you understand, without ensuring, without, um, by making sure they do not lose their, um, their sense and consciousness of who they are in Christ. You'll be able to only do that when you have been taught properly and when you have fed the word of God. Because if you don't deliver that message properly, you are going to get that person thinking that she's subject to that spirit. Are you following what I'm saying? That she's subject to that spirit and she's under that spirit and she needs to try to get us to ascend. No! You say, sister, you are being oppressed by a demonic spirit, but I want you to know that you have authority in Christ Jesus over the spirit. Jesus Christ died 2,000 years ago to give you that authority. This devil does not have any rights and does not have any place in your life and in your body. I'm going to cast this devil out now, but you must remember that you, are, you could have done this by yourself because you have authority in the name of Jesus over this demonic spirit. That believer must not leave your presence thinking that there is an authority you have that she doesn't have. Because to do that will be to what? To do a disservice to that believer. Praise the Lord. So you have to use it skillfully and that has to come with understanding of the word of God. Praise the Lord. I said praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now because of our time, we'll just rise up. Praise God. Rise up on your feet. Amen. Glory to God. The fourth kind of tongues, the fourth adjective used to describe tongues is found in 1 Corinthians 2 and verse um, 8. No, cross Corinthians 12, 4 to 6. And it is called divers. 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 Kinds. Of tongues. 
diverse kinds of tongues. This is talking about differences of tongues, which means tongues don't sound alike. The languages are diff different. They don't sound alike. They don't sound alike. So I remember there was a time when everybody's tongue was ba 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 ma ma ma. No, tongues don't sound alike. The diversities of tongues. And even you, how many of you in your, in your own prayer, pr pr you uh, notice that there are diversities even in your tongues? Sometimes you're speaking in tongues and it sounds different from what you usually sound like. How many of you know what I'm talking about? Uh huh. There are diversities in tongues. Praise the Lord. Now, how do you use it? In tongues, number one, when there is interpretation, you can speak in tongues freely to give a message. Glory to God. To give a message. Okay? All right? When there is interpretation. When there is no interpretation, you speak in tongues to yourself. Praise the Lord. I said praise the Lord. You speak in tongues to yourself. Okay? All right? You speak in tongues to yourself. All right? Because you are edifying yourself. But when there's interpretation, when I mean there's interpretation, I mean there's somebody in the congregation that can interpret. You, can, you are feel, feel free to, you know, speak in tongues as, um, and give a message. The other thing is that you can sing in tongues. What is singing in tongues? Singing in tongues is speaking in tongues, but speaking in tongues with a melody. Glory to God. You can sing in tongues. So when you are worshiping God, all right, instead of just singing praise and worship, you can sing in tongues. Praise God. So you can, don't, don't speak in tongues, you can sing tongues too. Sing in tongues. Then as you are singing in tongues, you can sing the interpretation of the tongues. Then you can now come and teach us the interpretation of the tongues that you sang. Praise the Lord. Are you following? I said, are you following? Now, as you do those things, it enriches your spiritual life. Praise God. Now, let me tell you something. When you speak in tongues, devils cannot hold you down. No, no, sir. When you speak in tongues, the power of God is always manifestly, I mean, all around you. Yeah, can the power of God be manifested when you pray in your understanding? Yes, of course. All right, you can pray in your understanding and pray in the spirit. Okay? The scriptures are clear on that. Praying in the spirit and praying in your understanding means to pray in your understanding, but praying in accordance with the will of God. Very, very important. All right, in the will of God. But praying in the Holy Ghost, praying in tongues is the easiest way to pray in the spirit. All right, because there's no mental aspect there. All right, there's no, the Holy Ghost helps you, all right, present your case and gives utterance and gives you words to speak as you ought to, all right, by, you know, through your regenerated human spirit. All right, praise the Lord. So right now, I just want us to just begin to talk in other tongues. Just talk in tongues. Walk around, talk in tongues, and talk in tongues. If you don't hear talking tongues yet, just begin to magnify God. Magnify God. Praise Him. Everybody just walk around and talk in other tongues. You have just listened to a message by Rev. Dr. Femi Olalea of Oikea Christian Center. For other messages, visit our website at www.oikeacc.org. Remain blessed.